name is Teresa Ford. I am a Master of Divinity student at the Candler School of Theology at Emory University. I am also an intern at Ignatius House. The Incarnation, God became man. In Colossians it says, for Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. When I think of the Incarnation, I am overwhelmed with love. To think that the God who created the seas, mountains, full moons with nighttime rainbows and baby's breath became man to do what no other man could do, save our souls, amazes me. It is a salvation that could only come from the boundless love that led Jesus from the cradle to the cross. He did this while maintaining his divinity, truly God and truly man. And because he is truly a man, he understands what we go through in our life, our joys and pains. We are reminded of this in scripture. Hebrews 4.15, which says, We do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. He is in every way a man except for sin. This truth brings me immeasurable comfort in the midst of grief, loneliness, and sorrow. This is a profound knowledge that we are never alone in our suffering and struggles. Jesus is always with us. Our God knows hunger, thirst, poverty, and betrayal by loved ones. He has been misunderstood, mocked, falsely persecuted, and has suffered at the hands of others. He has experienced all this, though completely blameless, and all this for our well-being, to reveal to us who God is and who we, made in the image of God, can also be. He loved us so much that he humbled himself to come into the world as a vulnerable infant, experienced the joys and sorrows of human life, showing us how and what it means to be human. God could have saved us in any way he chose, an infinite number of ways. But he chose to become one of us. God made man and womankind for himself, but sin entered the world and separated us from him. The incarnation reminds us, as does Saint Ignatius through the spiritual exercises, that we are loved sinners. God's love presupposes any brokenness God's love bridges any divide. On the most basic level, the incarnation defines us and gives us our identity. The incarnation assures, of, assures us of who we are and who we belong to. We are children of the Holy One, the definition of love. As Henry Nouwen says in his book, Life of the Beloved, we are the beloved of Christ. This revelation means that we have nothing to fear in this life, that we can walk in our purpose with the confidence that the sovereign God of the universe has our backs in whatever circumstances we find ourselves in. Even in the midst of a pandemic, economic instability, and racial strife, we are the beloved. His love is a radical love, which means that because he loves us so, we are free to love others unconditionally. That this love goes beyond race, culture, nationality, political affiliation, or gender. We are free to love him and one another. It is an unlimited love not bound by man-made conventions. The love we give and receive allows us to rest from a world that seems to have gone mad a world that needs the truth of the gift of the incarnation sung from the tallest buildings, sung in alleyways and ghettos with a fire that extinguishes all pain, hopelessness and despair. The incarnation is a love story between God and his people. It is the love story to end all love stories. <laughs>